here at Packersham Equestrian Centre in Leatherhead to find out what you can do if your horse or pony is suffering from laminitis, one of the most common causes of lameness and disability in horses and ponies in the country. Laminitis is a disease that affects the feet of ungulates, which are animals with hooves. It's best known in horses and cattle and is a painful inflammatory condition of the lamini or tissues that bond the hoof wall to the pedal or coffin bone in the horse's hoof. Well, I'm joined now by Ben Mays, president of the British Equine Veterinary Association, who sees a lot of laminitis. Ben, what is it about this condition that affects the horse's feet that makes it so painful? The whole skeleton of the, of the horse, with its large weight up to six, seven hundred kilos, comes down into the pedal bone, and the pedal bone is suspended inside the hoof, like that's inside there. And if the laminae, which glue the pedal bone, to the hoof, the sensitive lamina on the pedal bone attached to the, the, the horn of the dead horn of the hoof, they're interlocked and, and in laminitis that becomes inflamed and then they can become detached from each other. And what are the obvious um, signs that a horse or pony is suffering from laminitis when you look at the horse or pony? So, so, so the signs really are of, of, of foot pain and foot pain in the front of the foot. So the pony will stand with its legs forward to try and alleviate weight bearing from the front of the foot and take it onto its heels. They bring their back legs underneath the horse to try and again take the weight off the front feet. Most laminitis is front footed. They can get it in the back legs. They can get it in just one leg, but most commonly that stance is the one. And determining early laminitis or, or low grade laminitis can be quite difficult to determine from other types of lameness. In the field situation, one of the more common things is that pony hasn't moved from that spot for a day or two and, and perhaps because it can't. Lying down a lot is quite a common one as well. So apart from physical pain in the feet, are there any other physical signs at all of laminitis? Yeah, absolutely. If we, if we come and have a look at Sherbet over here, the most common type of laminitis really is weight related. And here we've had a pony that has had laminitis in the past but now has lost weight. But you can see where he would put on weight. The main crest is really important. He's got quite a big main crest, but in some ponies it gets really large and, and arched. And when it sets like concrete, when the fat consistency changes, laminitis is imminent. Similarly with the, the uh, retrobulba fat pad behind the eye in this dip, if that hardens it almost starts to bulge like frog eyes. And, and the fat deposits here behind the shoulder, here around the loins and also around the tail head. They, if they get hard and solid then, then laminitis is imminent. Laminitis can affect any horse of any age or sex at any time of year but there are huge predispositions to it in certain situations and at certain times of year. Most commonly, it's a digestive disease caused by lush grass. Ponies particularly, and some types of heavier horse, do have trouble dealing with lush grass. It contains readily digestible sugars, particularly ones called fructans, and the pony's system can't really cope with those, and that causes bacteria in the intestines to release toxins that come into the bloodstream, and hooven animal's response to that is to develop laminitis. Are there any other causes of laminitis then? After foaling, a mare can have womb inflammation, and toxins released from that that can cause laminitis, and there is often underlying metabolic or hormonal issues that, that you can't detect and laminitis is a consequence of those. A very good example is something called Cushing's disease which is becoming more and more recognised, perhaps particularly in older horses and ponies of any type. A similar syndrome but different is something called equine metabolic syndrome. Now this is an insulin resistance causing a type of diabetes type 2 that's relatively poorly understood still but that can lead to laminitis too and both are hormonal diseases but are both are treatable using pills and management. Are there any breeds in particular or types that are particularly predisposed to laminitis? Ponies are really predisposed and native ponies particularly. Now that's thought to be because they've been bred and by natural selection to, to have very poor grazing and to cash in on it whenever it arrives. Also a pony can consume as much grass in an hour as a, as a horse can that's two or three times its size. There is no cure for laminitis although there is treatment available. A horse that has suffered from laminitis is also likely to have permanently damaged feet. So prevention is the best way of managing this disease. 
Dietary grazing management are key. The pony or horse should be exercised regularly. That's the best way of controlling weight, just like in us. Think of the grazing. Should they be out there all the time or control the periods that they're exposed to grazing? Using grazing muzzles in, in certain ponies, using patch grazing, so electric fencing, so only small parts of the, the paddock are grazed and then you can move the fence and strip graze. Remember that in the spring and, and particularly in the autumn, there are grass flushes, i.e. sudden flushes of fresh grass with those fructans and that can induce laminitis, so be really careful then. Also. Funny enough, after long periods of frost, when it suddenly gets mild, for some reason that triggers the fructans in the grass as well. And if you do suspect that your horse has developed laminitis, what should you do? First of all, take it away from the cores. That's normally lush grass. Put it in a stable, if you've got one, with a deep, soft bedding right up to the door so the horse is standing on nice, soft ground and not on hard stuff that will compound the problems in its foot. If you can't do that, fence off a corner of the paddock, preferably a soft one with, with evenish ground. Um, allow the horse to lie down if it wants to and call the vet. He can examine the foot and decide whether to use styrofoam pads or other t types of specialist applicants to the foot, how long they're going to be in, how to manage the grazing, um, and, and perhaps when to start exercising again and in more chronic long-term cases where the corrective fowry and special shoes are needed. When considering laminitis, remember, most cases of laminitis are preventable. Laminitis is often a sign of an underlying problem. Follow a careful feeding management regime. Don't hesitate to call the vet. Whilst laminitis is the most common cause of lameness in horses, there is no cure. The best thing is prevention in the first place. Make sure you know which animals are most susceptible under which circumstances. Remember laminitis is extremely painful and it is an emergency. So call the vet as soon as possible.